developers, TGIF. Can you hear me? Can you see me? What's going on? Happy Friday to you. Let's see if you all can hear me and hopefully there's audio and video. Blink once if you can hear me and see me. Let's see. Let me get much to my settings here. Today's topic, I shouldn't have looked at his LinkedIn. What does that even mean? I'll tell you in a sec. Hey, where is everyone? Eight watchers already. Awesome. Something's working. Hey, what's up, Paradoodly Do? Mr. D Cobra. Hello, hello. TGIF. Randy Miller. How's it going? Yanos. Hi. The Ian Bayless. The Bayless code. What's up? The static coder. Arise. <laughs> good to see you. Good seeing you all. This week has been an exceptionally busy week at Real Tough Candy headquarters. For those of you who missed it, we launched realtoughcandy.io on Monday morning at midnight. Later that morning, I did a live stream. Later that afternoon, I did a live stream and shared what that platform was about. For those who missed it, I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna be a huge thing. I just wanna show off my handiwork and then we'll get onto the topic. Let me share my screen here to show you what I'm talking about. Share screen. We're going to go to Firefax. Firefax. Uh, share. Can you all see that? So, this is realtoughcandy.io. This is a new learning platform. Uh, shout out to Lloyd, who in the, in the live stream on Monday said, So, like, realtoughcandy.io is for escaping tutorial hell. And I said, That's brilliant. So Lloyd, if you're here, thank you for the inspiration because really that is what this site is all about. Escaping tutorial hell, leveling up, landing a job, getting a raise. We have five courses on the platform as we speak, how to get a job in web development, designs and deadlines, practical UX UI for web devs, portfolio surgery, make your portfolio pop, freelance newbie, professional communication for junior developers. And if you are a monthly or yearly member, you get some serious goodies, such as a royalty-free photo and video library only available there. I'm not sharing this anywhere else. These courses are not on Udemy right now. They will never be on Udemy in the future. Now we're in the future. Um, same with the benefits. So I am going to stop the screen share because this is not what this live stream is about. However, I did, I did want to mention it because you developers made the launch so fantastic. Like we have had so many signups. We've had so many people just, it is really nice just hearing from you all out there in developer world saying congrats on the launch. Good going, keep it up. Thank you so much for such a great response. Um, the reception was absolutely magnificent and we're going to just keep, we're just going to keep building on it and making it bigger. So. That being said, how's everyone doing on this beautiful Friday? It's almost back to school. Some of the kitties in some of the states here are back to school. The heat wave is almost over here in the parched, scorched Midwest, of the United States. And um, that brings me to today's topic. I don't know how, but it does. I shouldn't have looked at his LinkedIn. Donovan, hey, what's up? Marcus Taylor, Wolfie Master. Good seeing you all. I should not have looked at this guy's LinkedIn. So here is what happened. Last week, I let me give you a brief history of my relationship with LinkedIn. It's been a pretty rocky one. So there was a time in my life where I used LinkedIn as a legitimate medium, a legitimate platform where I shared my details. I was really good about my privacy settings. I only responded to non-scuzzy recruiters. Like I was playing by the rules on LinkedIn. Everything was going okay. And why I say it's everything was going okay because it, it quickly turns into a spam fest when you play by LinkedIn's rules. So anyways, this was not very long ago where I was playing by their rules and actually, believe it or not, something really positive came out from this whole relationship with LinkedIn. A tech lead from Netflix found my profile and wanted to talk with me. We had, this was a few years ago. This was in 20, I think this was in 2017 or 2018, 2018. 
So like, it was like two and a half years ago. So we talked and this person was not a recruiter. She actually worked on one of the engineering teams. Uh, we talked for about an hour and it was great. Now I did a video, I did a few videos about that. And I've talked about that, that incident, that, that event in different videos and stuff. And it stood out to me for a few reasons. Um, number one, because I mostly have no interest in working for a Silicon Valley company or a company um, of, of FANG status, um, but I can always, I'm always open to changing my mind. If new information comes my way and new things, new neurons start firing, there is a possibility I will change my mind when I have more information. Um, number two, it stood out because this person was, I mean, we, she didn't just call me because she was bored. She called me from an office at Netflix in a conference room and she was getting paid to talk to me. And the engagement, it was a really productive conversation. And so what I'm saying is there are good things that come from having a LinkedIn profile, but the BS and bull crap and all this other stuff I had to put up with just to get that one connection, it, I, I hardly would say it was worth it. If you have a LinkedIn profile and you're playing it, like you're, you're being legitimate, you know, you're putting your actual accomplishments and your profile and stuff on there, you are going to get spammed to the netherworld. It's insane that it's, it, it, it's just a, it's a repository for junk. So after that phone call with Netflix, um, I eventually, I eventually worked at a different company when I was in, I, I worked in enterprise for a bit and that had nothing to do with LinkedIn. Um, so I stopped using LinkedIn because I, I really don't need it. Earlier this year, I, I started a new account and I said, you know, this could be, let's think out of the box. Let's think out of the box and try and see if I can connect with people because of the Rona and stuff. I wasn't able to get my networking. My networking game wasn't where I wanted it to be because of the Rona. It had canceled all of these events and stuff. And it was just hard. It's just harder these past couple of months. It's been harder to, to network and outreach. I said, okay, I'm going to sign up for LinkedIn and start reaching out to these people and start friending, friending some people, whatever they call it on LinkedIn. So I sign up. And I start adding people who are interested in the same things I am. Like, okay, Mernstack added. I add like 15 people. LinkedIn cancels my account. I got I got canceled on LinkedIn because apparently I was I was I was the one doing the spamming um, with sp suspicious behavior, adding adding all these names. Okay, fine, whatever. I was a little upset. Um, I mean, like a little, like a two out of a 10. I, I was inconvenienced because I was having, a, I was on a roll, like adding all these people to my network and they were friending me or whatever it's called back. It's like, yes, all right. We're finally getting somewhere with this silly platform that sometimes can be helpful. So anyway, that, uh, that was like, and then I tried to like make another account and stuff and they're like, yeah, we're not, we're not having it. We put a super cookie on you and we're tracking you for the rest of your life. They didn't say that, but that's what I just read that as when they said, um, we won't reinstitute your account or reactivate it or whatever. So this brings me to last week. I don't have a LinkedIn account right now that I actively use. I have a, I have an account where, you know, I just like network with a few people, but I, it, it's just, it, it's a footnote. When I'm looking at people's profiles, um, I'm usually just looking at them without being signed in. So anyway, so here's what, here's where the title of this video comes in. So I'm looking on, I think I was, I was on a social media platform posting something and this guy's picture, I recognize this guy's face from when I worked in, in enterprise. These algorithms are getting smarter because I didn't, I, I, I do not associate with this guy. Like I don't recall looking at his profile before, but I do know him. They're getting smarter. They're getting smarter out there. The, the lever pullers and the button pr pressers, they're getting real smart. So his, his grinning mug was right in front of me. I said, this freaking guy, I knew this guy from enterprise and you know, whether I didn't know him that well, but I, I knew him, you know what I mean? I knew him on a, on a business level. So I like, I wonder what's going on with this guy. I click on his profile and he top 
to bottom, just a wash in accolades, awards, kudos, high praise, top to bottom. Now this guy, when I knew him, he was really good with a certain set of technologies. And I was just like, whoa, this guy's, but he was kind of a jerk about it. You know the type? You know the type who have been studying something for like seven, eight years? They say seven years is about the point where you become an actual master of something. So I've got a few more years to go. Um, I've only been working in this industry since 2018, which seems like a long time ago, and it kind of is. Um, but I've got a few more years before I can truly say, yes, I am the master of X technology, at least according to the experts. So anyways, this guy has been doing it for a long time. He's very intelligent, but he's kind of a jerk about it. Just um, condescending, you know, the attitude, gatekeeper-ish. Well, you know, if you're not using Vim, you're a loser. Only, only, only good developers use Vim. Me, Emacs that kind of person, okay, whatever, you know, there's no accounting for taste. So I'm looking at these accolades and I'm just like, I can feel my face getting flushed because this guy has so many kudos and so much high praise, point after point after point. <sighs> Let's think of a invented name for this guy, Jenkins. Oh, Jenkins is the best. Jenkins won the freaking uh, countrywide award for XYZ. Jenkins got a raise for $50,000 because he implemented ABC. And I'm just like, I cannot believe somebody with this type of attitude, this gatekeeperish attitude has all these kudos. And so I'm like, I feel myself just getting negative, right? And I'm just... I, I log off and I'm just stewing because I, I don't work in enterprise anymore. I never, that was never my long-term goal. His accolades had to do with enterprise development. And so I'm thinking and I'm reflecting, I'm like, RTC, you're being ridiculous. You don't even work in that part of the field anymore. And you're jealous about this guy. Like who cares? And I think that is such a common Res emotional response. These social media platforms, including LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a professional, professional, I'm using air quotes, social media platform. And they're designed to bring out the reptilian brain where you're just emotional. And the other thing too about social media, these people aren't posting the negative aspects of their life why am I being so, why am I, why am I being bothered by this person who has these awards? I'm doing a lot of cool stuff in my own life. Why am I comparing myself to this guy? But it's such a natural thing to do when people have complete control over how they mold themselves online. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, people should have, people should be able to define themselves however they want, especially online. And um, not give their, not give out personal information if they don't want to use avatars, things like this. Like, I know it's a different internet. It's, it's, it's not like it was back in the day. Um, but back in the day, it was a lot more, there was more community. There was more, there was more, there was more privacy, but that's getting off topic. Um, but when you see these people molding their, even their professional careers in a way they want you to see it, even I have to remember that they're just listing off their accomplishments. What about the time that person got fired that I know of that they didn't list there? Or what about the time that person said something super rude? Or what about the fact that this person comes off as a total jerk? Do you think that's gonna be in their LinkedIn? I don't, and it's not. And so getting on the topic of LinkedIn, it's, I think it's a time sink. Can it be helpful? Yes. But the return on investment, the return on investment compared to other things you could be doing to level up, it's a low return. It's a, it's a low ROI. Because no matter if you find someone uh, in your former life who's really successful, or at least, you know, portraying that image, you're still going to get hundreds of spam emails every week. 
my inbox on LinkedIn right now for that one account, even though, you know, I'm not even hardly active. My profile is complete. It's, it's, it's nonsense because I just wanted something to quickly, quickly sign up. And, you know, yeah, I realtoughcandy.com, et cetera. But I mean, aside from that, I don't, I don't have my, my resume on there. Um, and I'm still getting these dumb recruiter emails, these mass produced, like there's got to be some sort of checks and who, <laughs> who determines who's a recruiter and who's not like, this is the thing about recruitment tied into LinkedIn, because so many people, so many recruiters, I use a lot of air quotes when I'm talking about LinkedIn, so many recruiters self-styled recruiters are on LinkedIn mass sending these emails and they're just a total time sink. So to go back to the title of this video, I shouldn't have looked at his LinkedIn. I shouldn't have looked at his LinkedIn. What benefit, what benefit is it when I'm checking in on people formerly in my professional life? Like, I wonder where they are now. And like, should I feel schadenfreude when they're not where, when they're not making a billion dollars? Like, what, what is the purpose of me checking out their profiles? So for me, checking out his profile, I, I just should have bypassed it. I just should have bypassed it. Unless I'm going on there. And social media, and I mentioned this the other day to someone. I think social media, and this includes LinkedIn, it's, gonna, it's the new big tobacco. Back in the day, you could actually smoke in hospitals. And then they did some research and found out that smoking isn't so healthy for you. And so you couldn't smoke in hospitals anymore, but you can smoke in restaurants. And then they found out more research that you know, smoking in restaurants isn't good for you or other people either. And they did more research and found out that secondhand smoke isn't too good for you either. And you can actually die from secondhand smoke. And then they did more research and found out that lung cancer um, is really bad and will kill you and is caused, can be caused by cigarettes. And then eventually, you know, decades later, people are, are seeing the truth about what tobacco does to you. Uh, and I'm a former smoker and I'm not judging people who smoke, but even smokers know it's pretty bad for you. So and, uh, we have that information now. We have that information available to us. Social media, I think the best thing you can do for your health as a smoker is to quit smoking. I think social media should be up there too. They're, they're gonna find out decades later even one visit to social media is bad for your health. And the best thing you can do is, is stop engaging in social media. I swear it. I find that the more I'm on social media, the worse mood I'm in, like guaranteed. Even though I don't have any personal profiles that I use for, for like, I don't know, like what do people do on their personal profiles? Like talk about things. I, I don't, like I, I share uh, Real Tough Candy development stuff on all these socials. Um, but even just doing that, I mean, I am, I'm bombarded with these messages that just make me cranky. It's not good. And I think stuff like even LinkedIn, it's a professional social media. And it, I think for the most part, it is bad for our health, our, our collective health. I don't know. Has anyone had really good experiences on LinkedIn? Let's hear it in the comments. Um, because I do have a course, How to Get a Job in Web Development, where I do show you. I don't spend a lot of time on it. Um, because again, I think for the most part, it's a really low return on your invest on your time investment. When I mean, you could be working on your portfolio, you could be working on customizing and crafting a really nice cover letter or some sort of um, written communication with a potential employer personalized. Has anyone had a really good experience on LinkedIn? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to have a swig of kombucha and then I'm going to get to the comments because I've been talking way too much right now. I'm jacked on caffeine and I'm sipping a kombucha. Is Chiquito here, by the way, Mr. Kombucha Man? I want to hear you in the comments. Ah. Also, too, just want to mention this really quick. If you're a blogger or a YouTuber, a uh, content creator, and you, you believe in what realtoughcandy.io is doing, we have an affiliate program. Go to realtoughcandy.io and on the bottom, you'll see it. And sign up for it. We just had our first affiliate uh, successfully accepted into the program the other day. So I'm really excited to see where that person is going to be going with it. Um, yeah, just something I wanted to throw in there because a lot of people, a few people had asked about it. Let's go to the comments. Ooh, Candice with the super chat. 
Thanks, Candace. Candace is curious, were you able to get a year of free premium on LinkedIn for being a veteran when you were active at the time? Uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. You know, I didn't go to, so I was overseas when I separated and I forget what they even call it, like your separation conferences or whatever. Uh, it's TAPS, right? Transitioning, active, whatever. So I think it's called TAPS and you go, they, they try to transition you to being a civilian. Um, I, I didn't even go. I was on terminal leave and I just like watched 70s movies in my dorm um, when I was supposed to go. <laughs> I had no idea that benefit was available, Candace. Have you used it? Um, pre, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the premium thing because some people have mentioned that to me that the premium is actually kind of helpful and useful. So I don't know. I think right, like right now, here's where I am with it. It's such a, it is a great place, I think, to connect with other people in the industry. I'm not interested in connecting with employers as someone who owns a business. I would like to connect with fellow business owners, people in tech, um, fellow educators. But because, because that bond between employer and employee is so strong at LinkedIn, like they really poo poo the idea. Um, but I really, I just, I don't know. I wish they wouldn't have, have disactivated or disabled my account because I was trying to connect with people. Like they, they said I was a bot and I didn't appreciate that. Donovan said, yes, it is. You nailed it real tough candy. Thank you. I, I think that's probably in reference to .io. I, I hope so. <laughs> Let's see. Paradoodly do got, thank you for the super chat. Spira Doodly says, quit, quit social media when I stop smoking and boozing, never look back. Yeah, and I mean, you're not missing out on anything. I stopped, I stopped using um, Facebook on a personal level, like probably 10 years ago, more than that. No, nine years ago, nine years ago this month. <laughs> I, I, it's just like, it is, it's just like quitting smoking. It's like, I quit smoking April 22nd, uh, 2015 or whatever. Yes. I stopped using, I stopped using Facebook August 15th, 2011. Like it was a big day for me. Um, you know, and I'm not missing out on anything. So let's see, let's see more of these comments. Jonathan says social media can destroy you. Also, if you're a depressed person, the constant chatter and overload of information is dangerous. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not here to be a, a depressing, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want this to be a depressing stream. Um, but last week's incident was really a sobering check to me. Like maybe deep inside, I do want to have that emotional feeling of being triggered. You know what I mean? And that's sick. That That's not healthy. That's not healthy. So I'm glad I did see it from, I did take a step back and was like, listen, stalking people in my professional network who I no longer work with is not a healthy behavior, but they make it so easy. They make it so easy because the more ticked off, the more triggered you are, the longer you're going to stay on the platform. That is dark. That is depressing and, and not good. So it's just like, always trying to one up, how, how do you get one over on these, these social media uh, platforms without it becoming depressing or a time sink or, or what? Um, and it's something I'm still as, you know, as a business owner even that I'm trying to, to navigate because social, social media is hard. They have these positions for social media specialists. Um, shoot, I mean, I wanna, I wanna invest in one. I would gladly, I can see why business owners do it because it's such a time sink. Like, where is, where, where's the benefit? That's my question. Where, who benefits and where's the benefit? We have some great comments here. So I'm going to go uh, into the comments right now. Curtis Davis, how's it going? Says, basically the company never tells the complete truth, social media, depression, ups and downs, emotions, but it's nice to make new connections. Exactly. And I think that's what keeps me coming back to a place like LinkedIn, where <laughs> it's like, you have to have just complete straight ahead vision. You cannot, don't, don't turn it all. Just have a mission in mind before you log on. Otherwise I started doing this and I'm wandering and I'm seeing other people and their accomplishments. And so that's the reality. Perception is reality, right? Like I perceive this coworker, this ex, this person in my network who, who is in my field, 
I perceive that person as ultra successful, just top to bottom awards, absolutely killing it. And maybe he is, but he also that it's not real life. It's just a summation. It's a summary of professional accomplishments. And if I had a de facto list of accomplishments, even in the past six months, I'm sure some people will be logging on to LinkedIn on my profile and getting jealous too. Like someone's always doing better than you. And that's something I have a hard time with because I'm super competitive. So even when I'm not in their class, like, so I'm in class B, they're in class A, even when I'm in a different class, I'm thinking, well, this isn't right. I got to do better. It's like, hold it. You know, 80 pound people don't go to boxing matches with people who are 250. We have different weight classes. So that, that's something that I've just, you know, on a mental level, have, have had to tr just continuously train myself because it requires a lot of discipline going on these social media sites, even LinkedIn. Let's see these comments. Donovan says, I have good experiences with LinkedIn, but I don't post much on it. There's a lot of spam with recruiters as well. If you can filter through, you can find some good jobs. Michael Kornblum's in the chat. Hey, Armad Michael, how's it going? Paradoodly says, Donovan and Craig super chatted me. <laughs> I love the um the super chat conga line here. Let's pair of doodles. <laughs> let me let me go up to the comments here. I'm, I'm sorry I missed your super chats. Oh geez, D Donovan, I didn't even see this. Craig and Donovan, I'm so sorry. Donovan says, congrats on the launch. Mind if I do a video review on Insta of RTC.io? Donovan, I would love it. I, I would love it. I would love to see your thoughts. Um, this is, I, I'm so glad you got a chance to check out the platform. Uh, send me the link. Yeah, definitely. I'm so, I, I follow you on Insta, but hit me up or send me an email or something. Uh, when you do it, I'd love to see it. Thank you. Craig Wadding says, here are 10 kudos for RTC. Craig, you know, I love my kudos, especially 10 of them. They, you know, they used to have a granola bar back in the day called kudos. I never wonder. I, I, I always wonder like, mom what's a kudos <laughs> thank you so much craig i really appreciate that and good seeing you good seeing you let's see german shepherd channel info channel michael kornblum says i remember a lot of uh the toxic personalities that i am no longer involved with in a way it's a survival instinct it lets us avoid these personalities in the future let's see science compliance says linkedin is garbage I let code pioneer says I like my spam messages from recruiters. It put, I love this comment. I love this comment. Code pioneer says I like my spam messages from recruiters. It boosts my ego when I'm having a bad day when I read their lies about how great I am. <laughs> and you bring up such a great point that as developers, as new developers, especially, we are getting so many messages. We're getting messages internally. We're getting messages from our family. We're getting messages from our friends. We're getting messages from strangers. We're getting a lot of mixed messages because a lot of people, a lot of developers who are up and coming, um, even people who are in the business, our family and friends don't know what we do. And so sometimes people dismiss it because of that. They don't understand it. So they think we goof off on computers all day or you know, you know, something negative. Um, and they, they ultimately dismiss it. But then we go to these other places where people are encouraging. We say, you got this, you can do this. You can learn this JavaScript. You can learn this framework. You can learn this PHP, this node, this Rust, this web assembly, whatever you want, you can do it. So then we have a complete opposite. Uh, the, the, the cheerleaders over in corner, this corner. And then in another corner, we have people who are totally disingenuous, uh, like, so-called recruiters. I mean, these people are, I'm, are you really a recruiter? We need standards. We need more standards. Name a career, name a professional career field, not professional. I preface this with professional. Name a professional career field where you don't have to have a certification. You don't have to pass the bar exam. You don't have to go to a national board of directors where they give you the thumbs up. You don't have to have any sort of college degree. This career field is weird like that. Because what I'm saying is you don't have to have any sort of certification, any sort of stamp of approval to call yourself a recruiter. What if we had, what if we had like a national, and this will never work. I shouldn't, I should never say never, but this right now, it's just, I just don't see it. What if we had like a national board or each country had a board where 
people actually got stamped of approval to be recruiters or something or internal company. I don't, I don't know how it would work. I'm going to be honest because I'm already seeing problems with that, but some sort of vetting process where anyone where the standard is raised so that not just anyone can call themselves a recruiter. Like you're actually getting paid a salary rather than a 10% cut of someone's salary to, to refer. Now, Google has that program, I think. I think if you're internal and you refer someone and they get the job, I think you get a cut. I'm not sure. Um, but but this, this crap of people just calling themselves recruiters, hoping to get a, a 5% cut of someone's first year of their salary is just, it's just not healthy. It's just not good. And I, I really don't see like, it's just too much. There's too much, the, the signal to noise ratio is, is, is off. Candace says about LinkedIn, I only use it to communicate with my marine buddies and software engineers, machine learning, machine learning engineers, MLE. I took advantage of the, pre, the free premium though. And yes, we go through TAPS before getting out of the military. Okay, well, I totally, I totally ditched TAPS. Um, <laughs> I, I, had, I totally just, I don't know what else to say. I, I totally just skipped out. Um, the free premium. Yeah, I, I've never checked it out. Ian says, I have had positive experience on LinkedIn. I always thought it was endearing that a recruiter would reach out to me for a job. I use social media to post about my projects and maybe inspire others. Right. Social media does have some, some really great things. And some people may even say YouTube is a social media. Um, so, I mean, I can't be, I can't be too, I can't poo poo it too much. Um, because it really has helped me and um, given me a platform to help other developers. Uh, but I think, I mean, just going into it, you do have to have a mindset. Otherwise you get sucked in. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like getting sucked into a gang or something. It's like, join the negativity RTC. And then like my initiation ceremony is like going to say something nasty to someone random, just like, Hey, nice life. Um, it, I just, you just have to go in with, with armor on. Let's see, some really great comments here. Donovan says, I quit Facebook back in 2017 and I don't regret it. I mean, seriously, there, there is nothing to regret um, in my experience. The static coder says, taps is full of what they should have told you upon joining. <laughs> right, and I saw like they had a little worksheet, like here's what you can expect. I'm like, I'm not going to this. I, I didn't join when I was 18. So I had, a, I had some years you know, in the civilian world. So I was kind of, you know, I knew what to expect once I got out. Anyways. Uh, Craig Wadding with the super chat with the pair of doodles. Thank you so much. Super chat's rolling in right now. I appreciate it. Science compliance says kudos bars are popular for me in elementary school. Good as gold, right? Trading kudos bars for like a little Debbie or something. We never had, my family never was a big believer in like the pre-made bars, like sometimes in Nutrigrain, those weren't very good for trades though. Like you had to have a kudo, kudos, you had to have a kudos or a little Debbie, like to really get a good trade. Welcome developers. If you're just joining us, we're talking about LinkedIn today and uh, how I shouldn't have looked at this guy's LinkedIn profile because it was a total time sink. It robbed me of my time and it didn't benefit me in any professional or personal way. Um, we're talking about mentalities when going into social media, such as LinkedIn. We're talking about social media in general. And we're talking about how it may help you. Um, I, I do think there is a lot of potential in LinkedIn yet. I just, I just, I, and I think I'm salty because I don't get my way whenever I log on. So I got a, I got a chip on my shoulder, but these comments are absolutely fabulous. Let's see. Michael Kornblum says, dangerous slippery slope RTC. There are some folks who believe that we shouldn't work our craft without some form of government or private certification. I mean, I, I don't I, I don't think talking about it is is dangerous. I would like to get some more dialogue on it uh, because I do see I see a lot of consistency inconsistencies and uh, these recruiters are really making our lives hell. So what what's the solution? And I'm not saying automatically we need to get certified, but that has proven uh, over time immemorial that certifications when they're given by professional agencies, 
tend to have some sort of standard that comes with them. I'm trying, here's where I am, Michael. I'm trying to find a standard that will still be inclusive of people who don't have college degrees and that will help, that will actually help them rather than waste their time. Because what we're seeing on LinkedIn right now is a bunch of recruiter junk, uh, spam emails, fake profiles, uh, people who are only trying to get their little 10% cut and know nothing about the, have you ever been interviewed by a recruiter? Have you ever been pre, have you ever, have you, has anyone out there? Yes, you have. So <laughs> I want to hear your stories. Have you been on the phone with the recruiter or in a Zoom meeting with the recruiter? For the most part, in my experience, they have no idea what they're talking about. None. Or, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't have it. Uh, cracking the coding interview. I should have that that book with me at all times. Or they will they will point to a page in cracking the coding interview and ask you that as part of a pre-interview. There's something wrong with that, uh, and I think it needs to be fixed. I don't I don't know exactly how, but I think it needs to be fixed. Let's see. We got some we got some Odin project um, mentions here in the chat. Oh, today's Friday, August 28th. Where has the summer gone? Also, here's here, I'm, we're going to have some more pre-recorded videos coming up. Uh, and one of these things, I might do a live stream on this. It might be a pre-recorded video. But for people who are interested in, in six-figure jobs, because I noticed, like, obviously, this is a lucrative career field. Um, but some people just want the cash. They just want the money. Um, and we're going to talk about other other areas where you may be, may, may be may find it more interesting because some people do enter the career field and find this career to be very boring. And even with the six figure promise, they don't want to do it. Uh, so we're going to talk about other options. Uh, it's going to be like the money issue or something. I was on the phone with a relative the other night and I asked about one of my cousins. Listen to this. Just listen to this. My cousin has been working uh, in the mining industry for past that seven year mark. So he's like an expert in mining. He has worked his way up the ranks. He worked in Alaska for a bit and he's working somewhere in the continental US right now. You know how much he pulls in every year doing what he does after being in the business for, I think he, I think he's been in for like 15 years, 10 to 15 years. I think this is, he's a rarity because he's, he's um, been in one industry for the same amount of like many years. I think at least 10 years he's been in, you know, when, how much he pulls in every year? Well, he grosses this much. Quarter mil. No college degree. Let that sink in. Quarter mil. And he is underground. He works with the most primitive old school technology, technology, so many air quotes in this, in this live stream, the most primitive tools and technologies you can imagine. And he's pulling in a quarter million dollars. Not bad, not bad. The work's hard, but he's doing all right. And he doesn't have a college degree. And I, I my, my mouth was like, and that's one of the situations where I'm like, good for him. You know, when it's in your family and it's someone you're like, you're like, dude, that's awesome. But when you see strangers who are doing well, you're like, yeah, I hate you. Like, <laughs> it's just like, I think these social media platforms pr pr promote that binary approach. Um, let's go to the comments here. But I just thought that was interesting because there are a lot of career fields out there that we don't want to talk about because they're not sexy. Uh, that pay really good money. You know, I, I've mentioned this many times in, in live streams and pre-recorded videos. I used to be a bartender. There are bartenders pulling in six figures. And you know what, you know what about bar bartenders? You know what it is? They get paid in cash. The minimum wage for bartenders in Minnesota is like $4.75. The rest they make up with tips, cash, daily. People, I know one person who bought their house in the Minneapolis St. Paul area, in the Twin Cities area, cash from the tips they made working at a Vietnamese restaurant in Maplewood. They're out there. That and that that's not uncommon. Um, let's go to these comments. Paradoodly do is lighten up the chat here. 
Um, let's see. She says, yeah, Paradoodly says, yes, I have. It was super weird. She was in Arizona pre-interviewing me for a job in Minnesota. I had questions that she had to, I had questions that she had to end the call and ask the company, call me back after the job closed. Another guy was in Colorado and wasn't clear on what the position was he was screening me for. Exactly. So interesting. That was that for, that was it. Was that for a tech job or what field? Um, paradoodly, because that's interesting that this isn't just this, is, the recruiting thing isn't just limited to software development. Like there are lots of recruiters. Recruiters will get paid no matter what industry they in, if they place an employee. Ian says, or the Bayless code, I've been on interviews where they didn't know the difference between Java and JavaScript. And one that sold me on a JavaScript dev job and found out is for action script dev job. I mean, bingo totally clueless like and you're in charge that's really scary it shouldn't be my responsibility as a candidate to correct you as a recruiter as a difference between java and javascript like seriously it's insulting it really is insulting for for the person who's about to be interviewed and we all make mistakes uh but the truth is a lot of these recruiters don't know don't even know the lingo when it would take them 15 minutes to study up on, you know, some popular misconceptions like no JavaScript is not Java, action script is not JavaScript. Like it, it requires such a minimal effort. You don't need to know how to code. You just need to know a few terms, just know the lingo. You can get a lot of places just know, just speaking the lingo, but they don't even do that. Uh, the, uh, yeah, and I don't want this to get into an anti-recruiter video, but LinkedIn and scam recruiting go like this. Ah, get my blood pressure all raised thinking about all these these fake recruiters. Let's see. BX Pro Twenty Four says recruiters just read the job description and question form. You know, and then that's the thing too. If all these people call themselves recruiters, go on LinkedIn and spam these accounts, what that tells me they're getting some sort of response, right? They wouldn't do it if the response rate was zero. And that's the thing about spamming. So spamming relies on volume. You have to do it a lot over and over. And if you send out a million messages and only get a 0.1 response rate, you still got enough work to take care of yourself for, for a while. You got enough people to vet, even if you just get a teeny tiny minuscule response rate. Like, and I was thinking, okay, if these people can do it like that, if all they're doing, they're, they're probably buying some software where they can, with a data scrape LinkedIn or something, which is probably against the terms of service, but who's really, who's really counting, who's really paying attention and, and emailing these accounts en masse, if they can do that and get a response, like, why, why am, why am I not recruiting? Because I have so many people in my network and I have, I know so many talented developers who are looking for jobs. Why am I not recruiting? Um, and companies, companies like, yes, RTC, we want you go out there, be a foot soldier for our company and bring us the best and brightest. And I was just like, man, I, I would make a killing doing it, but that's not my calling. Uh, but I mean, anyone watching this stream is probably overly qualified to be a recruiter. Honestly, even if it's just your first week learning how to code, you know, more than most people who call themselves recruiters. And I mean, what do these people do in, in real life? Like, are they living off their recruitment commissions? Because if you place five or six people a year, you, if you place one person every month, are they placing people though? And like, like who, who are there? Who is the person giving? Or like, are these like Tupperware parties? I feel like there's a lot of pyramid schemes going on um, in the recruitment industry, and I really want to get a legitimate recruiter on this channel to talk about how it's supposed to be done compared to the LinkedIn way. Let's go to the comments here. Michael Kornbloom says, I did have one ethical recruiter interview. Both him and I agreed we were a poor fit for a position and still talk with him every now and then. Let's see. Main Street Studio, how's it going? Main Street Studio says, 
Uh, I enjoy living outside my comfort zone. Being on social media platforms like Facebook, Snapchat, et cetera, is inside my comfort zone. So I don't do that. By the way, what's LinkedIn? <laughs> honestly, I never used it for any for anything. Main Street, I, I mean, honestly, you're probably not missing out. Um, it's LinkedIn. <laughs> It's just for finding employers and submitting your resume and like connecting with people. Apparently, I don't know. I got kicked off. I don't really know the full the full benefits of LinkedIn. Um, it's been a while, but I, I like that comment. I enjoy living outside my comfort zone, and you know that's the thing too. These platforms, including LinkedIn, as developers, don't challenge us to go one step one step above. And when we go one step above, that's exiting the comfort zone, and. It's so easy. This is coming from, oh, I'm 100% self-taught developer. I didn't go to college for coding. I didn't go to a boot camp. I didn't study computer science in college, et cetera. I have gone to college for certifications and various things. But as far as the core of my education, it was, it was being self-taught. And one thing I know for sure, over the years of the first, the first two years where I was learning this, like starting in 2014, is that it's just you in front of a computer. And that's very comforting because it's almost like driving a car or something. You're in total control. Only on, their in on the internet, there aren't these lines. Like when you're driving, there aren't, there aren't as many rules. You can go anywhere you want. You can do anything you want. You can write anything you want. You, you might get kicked off a platform, but oh, well, just start another stealth account. Like it's, it's still this wild west thing. And that's really exciting, but there aren't any places when you're doing it completely by yourself it, it's very unnatural for us to challenge ourselves to get out of our comfort zones and i understand that and i know that because that's what i did for so long and the real leveling up comes when you step outside that comfort zone because an employer isn't going to when you're in your comfort zone you're 100 percent in your element and there is an employee there is not an employer who will meet you at your 100% when they're making all the effort. You at least need to come halfway to them. They're not gonna come to your table and do business at your table. You have to go to their table. And so that where, that's where it starts to hurt. That's where it starts getting real when you get these callbacks or you get these emails where you're, where you're sending out your application materials and you're in your comfort zone and they say, well, we're sorry, we, we don't want to interview you or we're sorry you didn't get the job. You got to keep pushing and getting to, to outside of that comfort zone and meeting them closer to their table. Because there's two tables here. That's, no one talks about this, but when they say, what can you bring to the table? They mean, what can you bring to my table? And people get it mixed up. People get it all mixed up where you know businesses and employers accommodate the candidate. The candidate comes to the employer's table. And the sooner you can get out of that comfort zone where it's like, okay, this is my table, it feels great. The sooner you can kind of make it feel uncomfortable, that's when you're making progress because you don't get paid in your comfort zone. Things are really just, there's no oxygen there. And when it comes to working for a company or even doing freelancing, we're talking about clients. Maybe clients are coming to your table, but it has to have some oxygen in there and the client has to be able to breathe. And so that's a really interesting comment made by Main Street Studio where this person is trying to get out of their comfort zone. So they don't, they don't engage in these social media platforms because they don't push you to be better. Um, and I, I don't know if that applies to LinkedIn, but I think in a lot of ways it does. Let's see. Main Street says 2020 is moving fast for me. Yeah, it's moving way too fast. It's moving way too fast. Nika says, I didn't even know you could get kicked off LinkedIn. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> they were just like, I'm telling you, I, I, I promise I was just trying, I wasn't trying to gain the system or anything. I was just trying to make some connections with people um, and treat it like, Treat it like a meetup or something where I could have people in my network who I didn't necessarily know personally, who I could say, you know, this person's interested in the Murren stack ad, ad, like, I didn't know it was like this professional thing where you had to like work with them or they ask the other person, do you know RTC? I didn't know it was like that. And so I was just like adding people and they said, yes, we've, we've detected unusual activity 
your account has been suspended and you have been uh, given the boot. <laughs> there's there's no option. And they, like, you can't appeal these decisions. Um, and it's not a big deal to me because I'll just make another account. But at the same time, going back to that return on investment thing, like, wh where's where's my benefit? I'm not, it's, it's just a, such a low return on investment. I want to know, has anyone here on link, has anyone here Tell me your LinkedIn stories, because I think this is such a fascinating platform where we have people like Jim. Jim, are you here? Shout out to Jim. He's been in the Discord. He's been an RTC member for, for years now, uh, but he's very active on LinkedIn. I want to know his benefit. Like, what's the benefit? Whether it's uh, job opportunities, uh, money in some way, income in some way. Like, if people are liking your posts, do you get more prominence? Like, what about from like a business perspective? Do we have any like small business owners here who have used LinkedIn to their advantage? Because honestly, I'm not giving up on LinkedIn. I'm just saying I shouldn't have looked at that guy's profile and I shouldn't have treated it like, uh, I, I shouldn't have gone in with the mindset of, yes, I'm open to anything. Like I need to be very focused when I go on LinkedIn. And I think there is a lot of opportunity there and I'm just trying to tease it out of the cesspit of these fake recruiters, spam emails, fake accounts. And it's such BS anyway. I, I friended these people in the oil and gas industry and so, and LinkedIn is like, wish, uh, I don't know what his name was, wish Greg Johnson a happy birthday. I'm just like, click. And he DM me, he's like, thanks. I'm like, I have no idea who this guy is. How is this even happening? This, this, this platform is weird. Uh, but I think there is, there, there can be a way to leverage LinkedIn, uh, even as a newbie. And going back to the story about that Netflix lady, it was a great conversation. Uh, but the, I could have gotten on a phone call with someone from Netflix a lot easier, in my opinion, than, than wade through the hundreds of messages and, and fake uh, profiles and stuff. Like, there, there's a better way. Coder Sales says, hey, Candy, LinkedIn can be sketchy. You got to be careful with making connections and promotions. Fennec Ron says, I'll never put my file on LinkedIn or Indeed. They're full of scammers. They will bombard your email address. Uh, Luigi Rodriguez, how's it going? Hey, RTC, I'm from Peru. And let me tell you, the same happens here with recruiters. Most of the time, they have no idea about the technical job. It seems they are just from the HR department. Video audio says LinkedIn is blocked in Russia. They might be onto something with that. Hey, Hassan, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. I'm glad to see you in the live stream. PH View says, yeah, they suck. Someone needs to build a weeding recruitment platform. I mean, I think there are a lot of opportunities and maybe this already exists, but like a vetted site what about like a LinkedIn for software developers? And I know I've, I've seen like job boards where people place their their um, resume materials and stuff on there. But I think like, what about a place like this person mentioned in the chat where the scammers have been weeded out and it's just, even if you have to pay for it, like 20, 30 bucks a month to have access to all these legitimate recruit because there are legitimate recruiters out there. That's the sad part. These scammers have really destroyed uh, any good name the industry, the recruitment industry and software development may have had prior to their mushroom cloud explosion, which I believe started on LinkedIn. It would be great to have a platform where it's just legitimate people and legitimate job postings. Um, and even if you have to, I mean, people would pay for it. I would pay for it to 20 bucks a month. So I wouldn't have to, how much is your time worth? Do you want to be spending four hours trying to find one solid lead or pay 20 bucks? Like to me, that's a no brainer, but who knows? Maybe it already exists. Let's see. Michael says, I enjoyed using LinkedIn for some time. I was active in a lot of communities and I wrote a few articles. Thing is, once it was bought by Microsoft, everything went downhill. Yeah, I forgot Microsoft bought that uh, outfit. Interesting. Hmm, let's see. Lots of great comments today, developers. 
Thanks for tuning in. Candace says, I just had a recruiter write me for a data engineer role that requires five years of experience. And I only have four years of software engineer, almost a year of machine learning engineer. I, Candace, I know it's like, did you even read my profile? No. Like, still thought I would be a great fit, but was not interested. Um, a lot of these recruiters don't even read our profiles. Like, and then they'll, they'll, they'll say something that's that I get. It's, it's funny because it is like borderline spam, but they, they glanced at your profile for like three seconds, saw a keyword or like one of their little programs delivered like a, a daily information sheet about potential leads and they're like hmm i think i'll write this person he's like dude you didn't even spend why would i spend an hour talking with you at a pre-interview when you couldn't even invest five minutes in in talking with me and who are these companies so if a company if a recruiter is bringing you to a company that company is endorsing maybe not explicitly but implicitly endorsing that recruiter like how do these companies not know of these tactics? Like they're fully aware. And it just, I think it hurts, it hurts most developers in the long run because like I, we've been talking about for the last hour, uh, it's just, it's just junk. It's a bunch of junk, but there are uh, legitimate opportunities on LinkedIn and I just wish there were more. Let's go to these comments. Code Pioneer says the dev job I have now I got through LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is like shopping at a thrift store. The designer stuff is buried beneath a bunch of junk. <laughs> right. I love that analogy. I love it. I am an I, I am a hardcore thrifter. It's one of my hobbies. If I go on a vacation or something, like one of the first places I go is the local thrift store, the junk shop. I want to go, I want to see what people are donating. And what's interesting to me is that all around the country, like the regional flavors. Like if you go to the record section, like in Northern Minnesota, you're going to find a lot of Perry Como. Like it's just, it's just really interesting to me. But the thing with the thrift store uh, analogy is totally right on because not only are you digging through a lot of junk to get to the good stuff, but the early bird gets the worm. So the person who's there at five in the morning, like when they're first like making the donuts at the Goodwill, those are the people who have eagle eyes who are going to know exactly where to go for the Louis Vuitton bag that was improperly marked at $4.99 $4 and thrown in a winter hat bin. That's the person, the first person there. So if you're not really on top of it, and if you're not, you, you almost have to, ha you have to have a strategy and you have to know how the system works in order to find the really good stuff. And I think that that harms newbies in the long run because if you don't, as a newbie by default, you don't know how the system works. So it's just, it's kind of like a lose-lose in a lot of ways, because like you said, there are opportunities, but you really got to dig for them. And by the time you find that opportunity, somebody with more experience has already kind of cornered it. Not always, but a lot of times. Paradoodly to do says it hurts the companies too when qualified candidates opt not to interact with recruiters. What do you mean, Paradoodly? Explain. It hurts the companies too when qualified candidates opt not to interact with. I see what you're saying. Okay, you don't have to explain. I see what you're saying. Right, right. When somebody, even whether you're a, a new developer, mid-level senior, whoever, wherever you are. And, and you see this nonsense, this clownery, you see right through the computer and these recruiters are wearing clown shoes and they have their full regalia on, makeup and the red nose, uh, talking about Java and JavaScript and interchanging them. Do you think a mid-level developer is gonna stick around for that interview? Like, I wouldn't, I, I, I would, oh, let me tell you, I, I would be Minnesota nice about it. That is to say passive aggressive. We all know anyone who lives in Minnesota or has lived in Minnesota or knows Minnesotans know that the term Minnesota nice simply means being passive aggressive. I would be Minnesota nice to the guy, go through the interview and I would hang up and be totally miffed. I would be so upset that this guy wasted my time, which I agreed to by staying on the phone call. Um, but I wouldn't pursue it. If this, this guy's a clown, professional people don't deal with clown shoes. This is a professional career field. 
perhaps other fields may be a little more lenient. But in this industry, where there are so many opportunities, and right now there are lots of opportunities still with the Rona, don't listen to some of these people who say, oh, no, the tech companies aren't hiring. That's, that's just not true. We had a guy on the other month during the explosion of the Rona who said, yeah, Twitter is hiring like crazy right now. The video's still up. I interviewed him. Um, he, I forget what the video was called, but you'll find it. Just go through my video page. I asked him about the job situation. He said, we're, we're hiring. Of course we're hiring. Um, we, have, we have people in the chat right now who have gone to interviews remotely. We have people who have in the chat who have gone to interviews in person. Some people, some companies, I mean, there are some states that are more strict with, uh, than others with their restrictions. Um, but what I'm saying is, paradoodly, that is right on. Like, when you have, if that's the, if that recruiter, if that know nothing recruiter is the face of that company, if, if that is the face of that company, that is not a good sign. When I talk to that person from Netflix, that she was the face of the company. She was the voice of the company. And that was a really great experience I had because she knows the difference between Java and JavaScript. Her team is developing technologies for Netflix. Oh, I was so grateful to have that opportunity, even if it was just, even just a conversation. One of the best most enlightening phone calls I've had in my professional career. And that's even hardly before I started my professional career. I'd, I'd been in the industry for like two months, maybe even one month. I think it was the same month I got hired at my first job. Uh, but, but that was a conversation I took seriously. And that was, uh, you know, even though I would never want to probably work at Netflix, I, I, I didn't feel any worse about it. You know what I mean? Like she was a good representative of the company. And when these companies are sending these clowns out, I mean, what do they expect? What do they expect? If I was a business, um, I, I would I would vet my my recruiter so hard. Like I would be in, I would be grilling them. Now they don't need to know how to build a CRUD app, but they certainly need to know the difference between Java and JavaScript, or they certainly need to know that those aren't the same things. Uh, because how how is that going to help my business if they're if they're tasked with filtering out the talent pool and filtering out the talent to bring to my business, I'm gonna be losing a lot of money. All right, developers. Coder Sales says, Candy, I read your book and you mentioned that you're a foodie. What state has the best diners? Yes, Coder Sales, this is the greatest off topic question. I, I, I'm so glad you asked. I love food. I love dining fine dining, dingy dining, ethnic dining, outdoor dining, inside dining, patio dining, alfresco, however you want to call it. I just love it. I would say the best diners, let me, what state has the best diners? You know what? Out East, uh, the Philadelphia area, like we don't have this in the Midwest where we have like Philadelphia in the suburbs and Philly has these crazy 24 seven diners. Like if you're into like greasy spoon stuff, um, I would say the Philly area has some really good diners and like, like just like your old school, like 70s style, you know, meatloaf and, and mashed potato specials with like choice of super salad. I think, I think out East, I think Philly, um, as far as overall dining, I would say Houston, Houston has a freaking fourth largest city in America. Um, just every, if you like ethnic food, oh my gosh, you'll be in hog heaven. The only thing I can't stand about Houston is that it's freaking hot. It's a big swamp. Um, I love pho, pho paradise. There's this place called pho Bing. It's in a trailer. They have multiple locations, but there's one in, uh, I think it's Southeast Houston. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Coder Sales, have you ever been to Denver? Yeah, I love Denver. I was at Red Rocks Amphitheater for a music fest. Uh, New Year, I also went there for New Year's. I've been there a few times. Great city. I love it. Denver is so fun. I, I really want to go back soon, but I have not been on a food tour in Denver. Developers, we're getting way off topic. On that note, I'm going to wrap it up. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for making realtoughcandy.io just such an amazing launch. If you haven't checked it out, it's a no-nonsense software development platform will you, will, where you will learn 
software development processes so you can level up, land a job, and get a raise. Thank you so much. I just, if I start naming names, I know I'm going to forget a few people, so I don't want to do that. But let me just say the VIPs, my patron group, my YouTube channel members, you can see they have green on their, on their names, a little piece of candy next to their names. People who have DM me, emailed me, messaged me in other ways, just, just saying good job on the launch. Like these, these things really matter to me. Uh, they're important to me and they they really meant a lot to me. So thank you for for your encouragement. We're gonna we're gonna just take it to the next level. Um, and we're gonna rock it. We're gonna we're gonna help even more developers on their coding journey so they can level up, land a job, and get a raise. I'm RTC. Today we talked about LinkedIn. I shouldn't have looked at that guy's LinkedIn. What was I thinking? It put me in a bad mood. I felt like I felt less than when that's not even. It's just a horrible comparison. And um, yeah, it really kind of opened my eyes for the millionth time about how you really have to treat social media like a controlled substance or something. Like you have to be very scientific and very diligent, I think, when when dispensing social media for consumption. Uh, because it, it, as people mentioned in the chat, it leads to depression, it, it, it wastes time giving it up is one of the best things some people have done. And um, I'm not here to be preachy about it, but there are, as far as a time management thing goes, there, there are major pitfalls because as developers, we, we have a lot of stuff to do. Um, and, and our time can be much more brilliantly applied by making these visits more positive and more beneficial for us. So thanks for the great chat today. Awesome comments. I am going to log off. I have to go. Speaking of foodie, I have to go, you know, make the rounds at three different grocery stores. Do you guys do that? Do you have a grocery list? I have to stop at three different grocery stores because no store ever has that one thing you need. It's just, it's a grocery palooza over here at RTC headquarters. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. You guys are so great. Thanks for the super chats today too. Very nice of you. Very kind. Uh, shout out to all of you. And I will see you in the next video. See you in the Discord.